Hi, I'm Sarah. And I'm David. Let's talk about Survivor Winners at War. This yes. is part two I in do. our five-part series, breaking down the contestants this season. But, but first, first, if you're new to this channel, please click subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. And if you want to support us on Patreon, there's a link in the description. So, we've already okay. done four. Yes. In our last one we did... Nick, Wendell, Ben, and Sarah. So yes. check that out if you have. We are going in order from most recent back. So this time we are doing Adam, Michelle, Jeremy, and Natalie. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. So we know. We first, know what we're talking about. yes, first on the list is Adam, who was on Millennials versus Gen yes. X. He was a millennial. He absolutely was a millennial. Speaking of, he's still very young. Yes, he's the youngest. He is right? the youngest on season forty winners at war mm -hmm. at twenty eight years old. Woo! All right, bringing in those kiddos. Yes, I think there's only two people in their twenties this season. Like it's a much older cast than we're used to. Look, Millennials Gen X is when we met Chris and Brett. Yeah. That were just recently on Amazing Race. Right. We got David Wright. We got Zeke. Yes. We got Michaela Bradshaw. We like, had a good fun cast. A lot of people who have, you know, returned to play, gone on to other reality shows, mm -hmm. so it was a good season. And Adam, I think, is acknowledged as a great winner. And he was a super fan and yes. super smart, super yeah. well spoken. He went to Stanford. I think he's in trouble this season. Now let's break down why. Absolutely. <laughs> he found two idols. Yeah. He had a steal a reward advantage. Right. Now he didn't really play these perfectly. No, he misplayed both of the hidden immunity idols. Mm -hmm. He didn't gave need to away. play either of them. Yeah, gave, gave away, away the, the steal a reward. reward. So, but that was to build loyalty with Jay that he yes. gave away to steal a reward, but he wasn't super effective with, the, with these with advantages in the, the way yeah. that you want them to be, you know? Yeah, he did win immunity. Yes. And this season participated in Rocks. Right. This was, I think, the last time that we've seen Survivor go to Rocks, the most recent time. Crazy. And this was when Jessica pulled that black rock. Ugh. And just, I've watched that tribal so many times, the look on her face is devastating. Oh, it's awful. Like, oh, it's awful. Horrible. He was targeted a bit. Yeah, uh, at, at the merge, right? He does right? have some votes against him. Yeah. Just after the merge, yeah. But he really is good at getting in there in the social aspect of the game and yeah. changing course. Like, he did that really effectively in Millennials Gen X. And I think after that one tribal where I think he only got four votes, I don't think he had any more votes the rest of the season. Like, he really fixed that pretty effectively. I think one of his main strengths is he's a really good talker. Mm -hmm. And we saw in those last few tribals, he was like, all about David. You guys, we gotta get David up. David's gonna win. It's like open and out there. Right. And yeah, the a lot of the story was about David. Yeah. But no one said, yeah, once we get David out, then you're a threat. Right. Like, no one Nobody was like, what about Adam? On Adam? Right. It yeah. was just all about David. It's a lot of theatrics. He totally understands tribal theatrics. Yes. And I think he's super dangerous because of his skills at talking. Yeah, I mean David was isn't the meat shield in the traditional sense, but, no. but Adam used him really mm. well as a shield of like, this guy should be the target, but I'm still gonna kind of keep him around to a point to because a point, I want right. him to continue to be the target so you're not yeah. paying attention to me. Yeah, he also had a, an emotional storyline oh my God. that, you know, we as viewers were led into first, yes. that his mother was battling lung cancer, his brother came out at the loved one visits and was like, she's doing okay, she's doing yeah, okay, you right. know, but it was but it was hard not, for him. It was not good because, you know, Adam, I think, told Jay at one point, like, she's tried three treatments, none of them have really yeah. worked. Like, maybe right. she was doing okay at the loved one visit, but generally, she wasn't doing great. She oh, was, I imagine he was just trying to make him feel better. I'm sure. She was not yeah. doing like, great. Like, don't, don't focus on that. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. He was trying to keep Adam in the game, probably. Yeah. Uh, but the mom was also a super fan. Adam right. revealed at the of final the tribal mm -hmm. that they had applied to be on Blood versus Water. And, you know, so he was really playing for her. Yes. It was such an emotional moment. And yes. every single person on the jury, I think, was crying when he was yes. telling that story. And that led to a unanimous win for him. Yeah. Fifth unanimous winner ever. I mean, when you can have a good emotional hook, oh my it kind of just takes your game that step further. Mm, yeah. It doesn't win you the game. No. But if you have a good game, it just pushes you over the edge. And he used it in that way that a lot of people try to use it by keeping it a secret. You can't tell people about your, like, heartwarming, right. you know, backstory until the final tribal. And he did that except 
for revealing it to Jay maybe yeah. through the game. Right. But otherwise he didn't tell anybody. So mm -hmm. I think Adam's in trouble. I think <laughs> uh, he's young, he's smart, he's a good talker, and he's, you know, he did win an immunity. Like, he's no slouch in the physical challenges. I right. think people are going to be like, let's get this young guy out of here. Like... <laughs> They might. I mean, that whole like sort of recency bias, like yeah. because he's one of the more recent winners, uh, unanimously, especially, yeah. 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 you're going to have him in the back of your head. Mm -hmm. And I think he's dangerous. Like, yes, he's strategic. He's social. People are going to like him. They might want to work with him for a little bit, but he's definitely one you cannot let nope. get past a certain point yeah because of his mouth <laughs> yeah exactly and then just to recap his whole story at the reunion show after he won he did reveal that his mom had passed just an hour after he got back yeah. from survivor landed right. went straight to see her they had like a moment and then she passed oh my god like she, she was literally staying like alive hanging to see him. on for yeah him. yeah i mean that's a, oh, what a very story. moving story yeah Michelle Fitzgerald! Yes, she was on Cal Wrong, which yes. also had Survivor Legends. We had Ty. Oh we my had gosh. Aubrey. We had Debbie. Like, we had Caleb from Big Brother. Yes. yes. Who was medically evacuated. Mm -hmm. This season had three medical there evacuations. There were a few. <laughs> Caleb, Neil, and the then The season Joe. was like cursed. It was a rough season. Yes. It was Divided Brains, Bronze, Beauty. And Michelle was a beauty. She was. She was a bartender. And her game was super social, which makes sense for a bartender because you're chatting people right. up. And she was like 24 at this time. Like, yeah. She's a youngin. She's the youngest woman mm -hmm. on uh, Winners of War. Season 40, yes. Mm -hmm. She also, I think one of the big moves she made in this game was she was super tight with Julia and she flipped and voted out her closest ally in one of the tribals because she wanted to, She, I think she kind of realized like the Julia thing's not working out and I need to build faith with a new alliance and she voted out her closest ally which was ballsy and she did get some credit for that in the final tribal. Yeah, she's a really good all-around player. Yeah. Like she can think strategically. She's very good socially. People like her. Mm -hmm. And she can adapt. She yes. can be loyal with this group and then move over when she needs to. She won two immunities. Mm -hmm. She won an advantage to take away a juror's vote. That was like the very last challenge, right? When yes. she won that final reward. Yes. So she, and she did it. She took away Neil's she vote. She did. And he was so mean to her he on his way out. Deep. He was like, you think you're a bad bitch, but you're just a cute puppy suckling at the teat. I was like, what the hell, Neil? What is your problem? And he was like, I don't think you stand a chance. Neil was pissed. So she got the last laugh there. She did. She did win. <laughs> but I'd be pissed, too, if someone took away sure. my Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's fair. Like, he's mad that he's this opportunity to participate yeah, in the final right? title was stolen from Sitting him. Sitting on this jury for weeks yeah. here. Or it's really only days. Yeah. But, now, okay. she kind of... <laughs> was under the radar for the early part of the game. There were a lot of alpha men this season who were the like brawn tribe. throwing their weight around Oh in boy, camp. were they brawny. And she was like, I'm just gonna let them think that they're telling me what to do and I'm listening. But she, she quietly kind of found another way yeah. and was navigating, you know, under the radar. And then she surged at the end of the game, physically yes. and strategically. And that was the key because in the final tribal against Aubrey and Ty, People were like, well, you both faded at the end, and Michelle surged, so... Which isn't a fair thing, and I have, I do have some issues with the lack of credit that Aubrey got. Oh, yeah. But Michelle is definitely a deserving winner. She oh, won yeah. that final immunity. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually went to a tie and did fire making without it being a twist. Yes. It was legit. Yeah. Aubrey and beat Sydney, Sydney yeah. in fire. Right. This was actually like one of my favorite final fours. Sydney, Aubrey, Michelle, and Ty. Like that's a solid yeah. group. I really loved them. Uh-huh. And they I think honestly it was Michelle's social game because Aubrey is a great player, but not everybody loves her. Right. When She's you're living so with smart her at camp. And a thinker yeah. and analyzes everything, but she doesn't win everybody over the way that Michelle did. Right. And another thing to Michelle's credit is that she statistically is the least vulnerable female winner ever. They only had four opportunities to vote her out all season because she had a mix of like tribal immunities, mm -hmm. individual immunities. Like she there just wasn't a whole lot of time to try to right. vote her out of the game. <laughs> Now, because she is kind of discounted as a winner because of, you know, Aubrey and other issues, mm -hmm. I do think that 
She's not going to be one of the top threats Agreed. for season 40. Yep, but that's going to work And she's like, exactly. She's likable. People are going to just be her friend and work with her. People will think like, oh, I'll just use her as a number. Yes. I'll carry her yes. along. She's going to vote with me. But she's really good at puzzles. And she has 13 challenge wins total Tribal, in one season. Right. Individual immunity reward. Right. Yeah. So that is actually the max. That's the highest for any winner who is competing in season 40. Right. That's a complicated stat. Stick with me. Yes. Out of all the winners in season 40. Yes. 13 challenge wins total in one season. Yes. She shares that though with she Natalie. Does. Yes. And Wendell. Wendell. So yes. they're all kind of more recent winners, but challenge beasts, those three. Exactly. Yeah. So keep that in mind. Yep. I'm excited to watch Michelle. Yep. And just as a final stat, she won five to two to zero versus yes. Aubrey and Ty. Jeremy Collins. This was Cambodia's Cambodia. second chance. These yes. are all returning players who had not won. Right. They had played one time mm -hmm. and not won. Yes. Now he had been on San Juan del Sur right. with Natalie, who we'll get to next. Yes. Uh, and he placed 10th that season, but he was actually really close with Natalie. Yes. Because San Juan del Sur was like a blood versus water loved ones season, and mm -hmm. both of their loved ones got voted out first. Right. So they sort of became each other's designated loved one after that win and built a really strong bond. He played in that first season with his wife Val, and I just think it's so cool that he is a firefighter and yeah. she is a police officer. Oh that God. makes me think they are badass the people. The best people. And they are. Yes. Now, in this second chance yes. season, Val's pregnant and he's yes. not telling anybody. Right. Okay. Again, an emotional connection that us viewers have with him early on, yep. but the information is saved yeah, right. till that perfect moment at the end. Oh, he knows that he can't tell anybody. And it really is getting to him. Like there are a lot yes. of testimonials or confessionals with him throughout the season thinking about his son. You know, his wife revealed that it was a boy at the loved one's visit and he just is like devastated to be missing, you know, the early stages of her pregnancy, but mm -hmm. he knows. He can't tell anybody about that. And he really effectively used the meat shield strategy. Yes. With Joe, with Andrew Savage, he knew he needed physical guys to take the attention off yeah. of him. He is definitely a proponent of the shield plan in general. All the shields. Put Line yourself up with all the different types of shields. That's right. So that you are not the target. Mm -hmm. Not to mention he is so likable. Mm -hmm. You cannot oh like Jeremy. No. You will want to work with him. Yes. He's he's just a family man. Yeah. He's so genuine. Oh, he's such a good man. Like, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Now, this, uh, we should mention this season was chosen by online vote. Oh, right. They, the returning players, the yes. fans got to pick. Uh, and then this was also the season where strategy kind of changed because it was these second time players. And it was all about voting blocks rather than alliances. Right. Which is like interesting to see where the numbers shifted each tribal. Exactly. Somehow Jeremy always kind of found himself in the middle, mm -hmm. except for one tribal where he played a hidden immunity idol on himself. He actually had two, right? Yes, the season. he had two. One he played for Fishback, effectively. Fishback mm -hmm. would have gone home. The second one he played and then Wentworth also played one for herself. They both had three votes. And then, you know, of course they're both immune, so then the tribe had to decide by consensus and Kimmy was sent home. So Jeremy was in danger, but he had that hidden immunity idol to protect him. We had Wentworth on this season. Oh, yes, uh, yes, loved her. I need more of Wentworth yes, always. Yes, He won the final immunity mm -hmm. and positioned himself next to Spencer and Tasha. And he needed that final immunity. Like, I think he was kind of a target in everyone's mind at that point, but he won that and secured his spot in the finals. And I mean, to his credit, to unanimously yes. win a season with previous players yeah. who are playing amazing gameplay. Incredible play. games, yeah. 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 That really says a lot. Yeah. I think people rem will remember that and mm -hmm. know that in season 40. Like, I mean, that's a big deal. Of course, fans loved this season because of how hard everybody was playing. Yeah. So they're going to remember that Jeremy was playing hard, so was everybody else, and Jeremy still won unanimously. Yes. So. But also, you love, you love Jeremy. Yes. You will want to work with him. Right. So I think he's making it yep. pretty far. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think he'll make it to the merge. Then we'll see. Because the merge was his downfall the first season. You know, he was eliminated soon after that. But 
I got my eye on Jeremy for sure. And of course, like we alluded to already, Final Tribal, he explains that his <sighs> wife was pregnant this whole time. He's saying it emotionally. And again, took that really good gameplay yep. and just tipped it over the scales. Yep. And added that cherry on top. Give them the unanimous votes. Yes. All right, our last one is Natalie Anderson. Natalie! Yes. Hello. She is a bold ass player. She's a bad. She is not afraid to make moves. At least nope. she wasn't on San Juan del Sur. Nope. Like we said, this was a blood versus water season. Yes. She was on with her twin sister. And they had already played Amazing Race. Right. So they were kind of known just from another show. Yeah, and they did well. I think they finished fourth mm -hmm. on the Amazing Race. Now, unfortunately, her 20, that's what she calls yes, her, yes, her 20, yes. Nadia was out very first. First. And Jeremy's wife out second. So yeah. like we mentioned, the two of them worked very closely mm -hmm. this whole season. Yeah. What I loved about Natalie's game is that she made a lot of moves that we haven't seen a lot in the more recent seasons. She gave up a food reward. She stepped out of an immunity challenge and negotiated a food reward for herself. She turned around and told somebody to use an idol during tribal and he saved himself. And you know, it's like she, like I said, she's just not afraid to make those big moves. She did win an immunity, mm -hmm. but she is a CrossFit trainer. She is so fit. So she good. is so good at challenges. She won some reward challenges. And overall, she's another one that has 13 challenge wins yes. from just that one season. Mm -hmm. And is the highest of the season 40. That's right. She only saw one tribal pre-merge and, you know, never had a vote cast against her all season. Correct. Jeremy was her biggest fan in yes. that final tribal. He stood up and was like, Natalie's winning this, yeah. everybody. Like, this is her game. He did not even ask a question. He yeah. was just like, she will receive this. Yeah. She orchestrated many a blind side in this. I mean, there is just no argument mm -hmm. that she is a great player. Yes, and I will say, like, a lot of fans didn't love this season. Even Jeff kind of acknowledged that it was a little lackluster, but pretty much universally people acknowledge that Natalie is an excellent winner. Yes. Like, regardless of how hard the other people were playing, she was a badass. Yes. And I think people need to keep their eye out for, on her yes. at Winners of War. Absolutely. And and they know that. Like, yeah. she's definitely one that they are like, oh, yep, she mm -hmm. is really, but she, because she's so physically strong, Yeah. I think you'll have a hard time getting her out. I think She's you're right. going to allow her tribe to win yeah. immunities, and I think she's a super dangerous player, and I can't wait to I watch know. her. I'm so excited she's back. She ended up winning five to two to one mm -hmm. versus Jacqueline and Missy, but they both had loved ones on right. the jury. She can't win unanimously. So she wasn't so. gonna win unanimously. Mm -hmm. But you know, she did but an basically, amazing job. Basically, yeah. she was the clear winner of mm -hmm. that season. Yep. Also, last thing I think about her, she was supposed to be on Game Changers. Oh, right. And then she had a concussion, had to withdraw last minute, was replaced by Sierra. Now, if you remember from our last video, we talked mm -hmm. about during Game Changers, Sierra had a legacy advantage and she willed it to Sarah, which ended up saving Sarah yep. and allowed Sarah to win. So it's interesting how these connections lead to right, big things for other people. Right, because would never have done that. Yeah, right. I don't think. <laughs> yeah. I don't think she would have revealed that no, information no. if she had gotten it. Yeah. So, you know, Sarah Very owes a little bit to Natalie indirectly. <laughs> now, we didn't talk in our last video about some other aspects of season four. They are bringing back Edge of Extinction mm -hmm. to the season, which I think more than anything, it's probably just a tool to get some of these big To players. keep them on the season. Exactly. Yes. They're going to be like, you're not just voted out. We're not you're sending you have... home right. after three days. You you're going to Extinction Island. come back. Yes. So to me, I'm, I'm, I'm like, for it. great. I get to watch them and be entertained by whoever's voted off yep. over at this other island. And the thing is, these winners are not going to do the same thing that happened on the first Edge of Extinction. They are not going to let someone come back and stay no. and win the game. So don't worry about that. But it's going to be still fun to see all of these incredible characters on another island still playing in the game the whole time. There's also a new twist of fire tokens. Mm -hmm. And what that is exactly, we don't know yet. Nope. But it's some sort of currency right. that can be used to buy in an the advantage. Game. I don't know. Yeah. I do think you have to throw in new stuff like this because mm -hmm. these people know the game back 
and forth. You got to twist And it. Yeah. they have to be forced to sort of switch up their own strategies. That's kind right. Kind of. That's right. Yeah. It'll be fun to see these people kind of have to be on their toes the whole game because there's this new wrinkle mm -hmm. and they're like, well, this changes everything. And you know? somebody might come back. That's right. Which is so terrifying. I know. I All know. of these players are so good. Incredible. Yeah. Okay, we're still so excited. It's so much fun to like dive in and like relive all of these old seasons. So fun. We have three more parts to this yes. series. So next week we are going to do Tony, Tyson, Denise, and Kim. Yes. Those are our next four winners. Okay, we'll see you then, guys. Okay, bye. bye.